Grand Theft Auto 6. The trailer, it has dropped. And like every other self-respecting internet website and or YouTube <laughs> channel, we got to talk about it. But that's the thing about Grand Theft Auto. It does cater to everyone, including tech heads like us. Uh, and that's why I assembled a panel of, well, two other Digital Foundry members to talk about it. So first, we've got Oliver McKenzie there with the Vice City colored lighting in the background. Oliver. Hey, it's uh, good to be here as always. A little late for me, a little tired, but should be a fun discussion <laughs> about a fantastic looking trailer. I'm sure we all agree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we couldn't talk about graphics, uh, you know, <laughs> quote unquote, without the Battaglia man himself. There he is. Yeah, yeah. I, even though this really, this trailer doesn't apply to me. I mean, That's true. I, I'll be playing this game in 2038. Actually, yeah. You, I woke up and checked my phone and saw sad Alex tears about uh, the lack of a PC announcement. We'll get to that later. Unfortunately, that was quote for that later, by the way. It's good. Ooh, we do. Yeah. So first of all, we have to determine which one of you guys is going to be Florida man today. <laughs> uh, Nobody wants to just... take it. All right, we'll just roll with it. All right, so the first the first question here, though, and I guess the first comment is that the trailer looks freaking great. Like, it is really excellent. And I do want to say that that's kind of an accomplishment in and of itself. Just, I love how Rockstar has continued to push the envelope in terms of what you can expect visually from an open world game, which is really interesting that a game that's so popular with such a mainstream audience and has such reach is still pushing the technical boundaries of what you could do on a console with these open world games. They did it with Red Dead Redemption 2, and it seems to be happening again here with GTA 6. So the first question is, is all this actually real time? Alex? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So uh, I'm going to say that for like 80% of the trailer, it looks suitably easily done in real time on the current gen consoles. And the reason for that is uh, there's there's like a like a certain level of this, and I think Oliver went through this. You described this after you watch the trailer, and then you watch it again, and you start realizing things. Well, like the first time you watch the trailer, like the first giveaway that it is real time is like just breakup in the oh, yeah. and it's usually mm -hmm. seen around hair in the trailer, and that's always hair is obviously really hard to render. It's detail that's smaller than a pixel, and it has aliasing in it and it, when the characters move in the trailer there's a variety of scenes where characters turn around those like uh uh characters with longer hair for example you can see it really easily uh you can sometimes see it in like eyelashes and things like that it's just like general breakup of image quality um and then like there's the second layer where you go back and you watch again you're like wait a minute i mean it is a 4k 30 video on youtube and youtube mm. you know has issues it's not perfect but there are some shots in the trailer like there's a shot where the camera swoops over those bridges that connects florida to the uh, i think it's the florida keys all uh, those really long bridges uh uh weren't they in the movie true lies am i am i mixing up movies oh, alex they're right also now? in real life i just want to tell you they're also in real life <laughs> but it was also part of the james cameron cinematic universe oh yeah and um, that shot there, I just looked at it. I was like, this doesn't look 4K to me. No. And then I then I thought about GTA V. And I remember when we covered that, I covered the initial thing of it adding shadows. And the Oliver covered it again when they added ray trace reflections. Yep. And it seems like they're doing like internal res and then FSR, right? One up to native, uh, it, up to it, output or something like that it definitely did have that fsr1 look weirdly enough it may not actually be fsr1 it could just be some sort of contrast adaptive sharpening with right basic bilinear exactly. you know upscale right uh, which, which would is, look similar which would look pretty similar anyway so the thing is like the trailer doesn't have like that perf pixel no pristine 4k doesn't. look to it it looks sub native 4k and obviously 4k is incredible sub resolutions can also still look good the trailer still looks good in spite of that mm -hmm. but then there's this, this, this like tertiary layer you go deeper you stop the you stop the camera you start counting pixels <laughs> uh there's a uh -oh. shot here when this woman turns around this is the most pathetic pixel count i've probably done at digital foundry uh where she turns around and on the lace of her top you can see a seven out of ten stair step which or 6.5 uh, stair step out of 10, which implies around 1440p. But then at the end of the trailer, there is a really great shot of the two presumably main characters in this game. I assume so, so yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, and they uh, bust down the door to this gas station convenience store, whatever. 
And uh, on the very top, as they go through the door, you can see that there's actually a very obvious pixel, you know, stair step there. And if you count that, it's a long one. It's 40 pixels. I counted a 40 pixels thing count there sample. And it's 26 out of 40, which is a little below 1440p. Could be mm -hmm. 27. It could be, you know, mm -hmm. like actually be real 1440p since the it's so imprecise there, the, the number I gave. But it's like sub-native, sub 4K, 1440p. Target seems to be 30 FPS based upon the trailer. Uh, these all seem very realistic to me. So I'd say like a lot of the trailer actually looks suitably real time. Well, you say a lot, but I think everyone, Oliver, you also noticed as well is that the uh, there's those scenes where they sort of simulate the the phone, where it's the vertical video mm -hmm. kind of TikToky style presentation, which actually fits really mm -hmm. well with where GTA would presumably go. It's been ten years since GTA Five, and it's interesting yeah. to see them integrate what has become cultural norms into the game. But uh, those may not have been real time. You guys think, Oliver? Yeah. Yeah, I think they they just look quite pristine, <laughs> and just they have could none just of be those. heavily post processed though. Yeah, that's true. They they kind of blur them intentionally. If you pro apply a nice Gaussian blur and some, you know, uh, mm -hmm. chromatic aberration to it, it can look kind of rendered. But yeah, I I think it also due to the way the the motion blur looked, it reminded me a lot of you know like those sequences in uh, Cyberpunk where they have like. The, the news cameras on like playing on like oh you know, like yeah in the yeah, background yeah. on like televisions and they show little snippets of the world there it reminded me of the quality of that where like good call, like good if call. you if you render out a, if you render out a video of a game like an Unreal Engine you can have like perfect like motion blur sampling and all these things right, that's right, what it reminded right. me of but okay so yeah. the thing here is is that this all seems very realistic uh, image quality isn't great and it's only 30 frames per second which on paper that doesn't sound great but the reason that that's actually good news is because everything else that's going on here is pretty intense uh one of the first features that's evident right away in the trailer is that it does seem like they could actually be using proper ray traced global illumination it could also be ssgi to some degree but with the with the precision that you see in some of these scenes i think it might be rtgi uh right away mm -hmm. there's that scene where it shows the main character in prison the sunlight's pouring through the window and the way it reflects off the different wall surfaces on, and the way her orange jumpsuit kind of reflects back on her face and how the lighting shifts, that's the kind of thing that wouldn't really be feasible with the more traditional uh, non-RTGI style solutions. Uh, and Oliver, you were digging into this as well and found things like at the strip club. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, like at 29 seconds, the character feet in the strip club, you just have like this really fine lighting presentation and really like subtle occlusion that really makes it look kind of RTGI-ish. And there's some overhead shots as well of the buildings in daytime where you see obvious bounce. It's very large scale, so that could be any number of things, but certainly it would be consistent with an RTGI presentation as well. Um, I, but I think the number one thing for me in terms of the RTGI is just that it's super consistent throughout. Yeah, like you don't is. see any issues with character models. You don't see any issues with dynamic objects. And I, I just think it's it's really that overall consistency to the presentation, the way that it's all brought together, that really makes me think that they are doing some kind of RTGI solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. And it's the lighting in a way kind of remind me of uh, ray traced cyberpunk to some degree, not mm -hmm. path traced cyberpunk, but you know. It does. Yeah, right. It does have some of those qualities, and I, th if that's indeed the case, uh, I think that's an awesome step for Rockstar because it's going to make the game really, really shine visually. Um, but yeah. man, just listening to us describe this, talking about like, yeah, it's twenty nine seconds in the strip club, you look in the foot. <laughs> like, I feel like we've almost become a parody of ourselves. And like, this, this I know, like I immediately different. thought I was like, I was like, that's why I said like that most pathetic pixel count I've done. In Th my this really life. is. We this is uh, this could be a parody video, oh, of digital family yeah. with the way we're talking. Did you guys about look it. at the six pixels on the side of yeah. the person's head at sixteen seconds? Um, Did you I see also, the hair on but, Florida man's back? So good looking. Um, did you? But the one thing I'm actually curious about with RTGI is obviously there's limitations just in general, like of how you would get these things running in real time. There's a lot of aspects. The other aspects we'll talk about the trailer later. But like in the distance, like you can have RTGI close to the camera in a lot of games. And like if you go back to that Matrix demo, I think they extended it to like like a couple like 150 to 200 meters 
out you know, like into the camera distance here but there's a couple mm-hmm. shots in the trailer where you can see even at like a pretty far range there's evidence of like large scale occlusion from sky lighting and also large scale bounce lighting from the sun and there i'm just curious to like see like if it's all rtgi or if it's a combination of systems uh because you know you would it, expect them to have to you'd cut corners maybe somewhere it so could very be well be see. uh absolutely yeah. i think my favorite shot for just pure like realism though has to be around 27 seconds when they're rolling through the neighborhood there with the blue sky and all the cars parked in the street like oh, it's yeah. just extremely eye-catching mm-hmm. uh and man if you actually kind of squint at it it looks almost real like it has a photo real look to it yeah. and just looking at all these cars by the way did you guys notice how good the car paint is in this like the the way they simulate well the, the the little speckles in the paint and the light sort of penetrating the clear coat and reflecting back, it's it's genuinely fantastic, uh, which was also true of Cyberpunk, I would say. So, yeah, Cyberpunk's another game with great looking cars. But uh, there's also evidence that there might be more to this than just RTGI, and that there seems to be evidence of ray traced reflections in many scenes, possibly with SSR mixed in, because if you look closely, you will see some disocclusion artifacts here and there. But by and large, there are reflections in scenes that wouldn't necessarily be feasible with just screen space or cube maps. Uh, Although, you know, technically things like rear view mirrors, which if you look in some of these scenes, you'll see like rear view mirrors, they could always do a render to texture or something like that, like right. a driving game. But, mm-hmm. you know, if if they're doing That'd this for everything scene. else, it doesn't expensive. <laughs> it would be very, yeah. it would be very expensive and stupid in an open world game, I think, especially when there's so <laughs> just many Just have other... this one little mirror re-rendering <laughs> yeah. the entire yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, so, so That'd be dumb. I think based yeah. on this, it's very likely we are also looking at ray traced reflections. Alex, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oliver pointed out a couple of these to me too, too, because like one thing is when you're looking for ray traced effects in a trailer, a lot of the camera angles can be extremely flattering to screen space effects oh, yeah. and or other techniques. So that's why you have to look for things that you just know are not possible with the other techniques. Oliver had a really good uh, point, for example, that there's that one side mirror on the car where you can definitely see off screen a car moving in it. Like it's like a white car moving by in it. That's something that you really, realistically, you wouldn't do a render to texture there. That'd be such a waste. Well, uh, RT is much more elegant uh, for that. At 52 seconds specifically, that's we also see there's the man dancing in the street. And it is just like the cell phone footage. But you see that tow truck looking thing drive by. And you can see yes. it properly reflected beneath his legs where he's doing the crotch grab. Yeah. <sighs> and, yeah. Uh, you know, the very- way we're talking about this. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what are we doing? Look at the reflection of the crotch grab. There's also uh, a naked man jogging, I think, oh. <laughs> through a gas station. And just for yes. one frame at the end of it, you can see that the a white truck is blocking off his body, but there's still the reflection mm. underneath the truck, so that's also indicative. But also elsewhere, we do see, curiously, what look like screen space artifacts. So maybe it's being mm. layered in or on some surfaces, like maybe larger bodies of water. Maybe they actually don't use ray tracing. It's not totally clear, right, John? Yeah, that's right. Like, for instance, one of the things that stood out was the the flamingos. I think it's at around 20 seconds. If you look closely at the water, there are some evidence of SSR sort of artifacts, right. disocclusion artifacts that you would get. It's hard to say because of how quickly cut this trailer is. Uh, but my best guess is that they are doing some form of RT reflection and also overlaying SSR, which is kind of pretty standard, I think, uh, because you do get a little bit more precision. And also typically, you know, things like particle effects, alpha effects, things like that, those don't easily trace into ray traced reflections, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you would want SSR to layer that into the scene so that everything's more consistent. Uh, And I think that works pretty well because as long as they line up quite smoothly, it's not that distracting versus SSR by itself or SSR layered on a cube map where they don't align at all. And then when it disoccludes, it's just like, oh, it's a huge gap. It looks terrible. Uh, I think it's an open world game where you couldn't possibly have the cube maps everywhere you want them to be. No, you would have to use a, a lot of generic cube maps. I mean, you could do like, I mean, Insomniac's original Spider Man did okay enough with that. They use a ton of cube maps, but even then, obviously, very approximate and very limited, and that's why they moved yeah. away from mm-hmm. it. 
if you go back to GTA 5, actually, in December of last year, they added in RT Reflections to that game. Right. Uh, on consoles, of course, not on PC, Alex, but only on that's consoles. Stupid. So. Oh, that's, that's really frustrating. Uh, but <laughs> that, that game combined uh, real-time cube maps captured from the player location with RT Reflections out to a very limited distance. So the problem there is you get that discontinuity, right, when you're combining yeah, those two right? elements. Didn't look very good. Now here, with this uh, more ray tracing centric solution, it's probably not relying on that fallback. You're going to have really great reflections across the entire environment. It looks like, and uh, it's That'd it's be just great. yeah, it's just especially for like distant buildings and stuff like that. Just like we saw in Spider Man, having perspective correct reflections that are detailed all throughout the environment makes such a big difference in like a cityscape with big glass towers, right? Right. Just yeah. The cohesiveness. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like this game is not Red Dead Redemption. A lot of people always point back to Red Dead Redemption like this looks better than X game that released today. But a lot of that is also just the artistic environment in that game. It's like a lot of diffused materials, rolling hills, not a lot of like huge occluding buildings and structures. And that's where lighting gets super complex. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's where traditional techniques fail the hardest. And yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a lot a really great looking game but it also it has like a lot of aspects of it that make old school rendering work better with it than definitely would work with gta 6 yeah i mean not to discount the work that went into that game because it is stunning no, not for sure no. but yes it, that type of naturalistic environment tends to work really well with more traditional rasterized techniques glass metal buildings on this large scale and all these angles this stuff is a nightmare and developers mm -hmm. have struggled with it for a long time I would say CD Projekt Red was one of the first to really kind of solve it with its ray tracing work done on Cyberpunk 2077. Sure. So mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that Rockstar would want to take a similar approach and push it as far as they could. And it does seem to be what they're doing here for sure. So I like that a lot. Um, but then not everything does appear to be ray traced. And you actually notice this right at the end of the trailer, I think, Alex. It's the, uh, yeah. the it does seem to be using shadow maps, basically. Yeah, and this is a little bit surprising. Well, not so, given everything else in the trailer, yeah. if there's ray traced reflections, if there's RTGI, yeah, yeah. something's got to give. Something's got to give. But like, yeah, yeah so like uh, Oliver uh, pointed out in the notes and really well in the trailer that there's a lot of shots like where you don't see some of the hallmarks of ray traced shadows that you'd expect, like the really nice like tapered shadow where it starts off hard and gets a bit softer. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 PC did that originally with like the soft shadow options the games have, mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> not to the same precision that you'd get from a ray traced effect, which is what GTA 5 on consoles eventually added, covered in a video by us as well. And here you just don't really kind of see that in the trailer. And then there's a very specific example that John just mentioned right now. At the end of the trailer, you look at the top left corner as they open the door, bam, on the opaque uh, door. I don't know, frame there, you can see what is just obviously a shadow map alias. And once again, we're zooming into the corners of an image. <laughs> it makes yes, me... we are not a parody of Digital Foundry. Yeah. We are Digital This Foundry. is probably why I enjoyed the Blade Runner adventure game uh, from Westwood back <laughs> yeah. in the day, because you spent a lot of time zooming in on things, just like in the movie, right. basically. I'm like, wait a minute, no wonder I like this game so much, because that's what we do here. <laughs> Zoom! Now, this, Zoom. Is, this is like taking pixel Enhance. peeping to a new level, but... What can I say? It is I will peep those pixels, John. I will peep those pixels. Uh, so, you know, shadows, not that exciting. It'll get the yeah. job done for sure. And I'm not surprised that they had to give, even though they did RT shadows on GTA 5, but uh, something they had to yeah. give, as you say. But I think one of the more uh, visually impressive features in this uh, is something that our hair care expert, Oliver here, who has a lot of experience with long flowing locks, uh, noticed. <laughs> it's the hair simulation. <laughs> Yeah, the hair good, sim, yeah. the hair sim just looks incredible. <laughs> Again, we're gonna have to go back to a shot that, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe is a little bit go. suspect. But at 38 <laughs> seconds, if you go to that shot, the way that character's <sighs> hair moves here, it's flowing so unbelievably well, and it doesn't. There's no like invisible clipping. It's all moving in just like this really nice manner. I think John likened it to Tress effects, which I totally oh, yeah. agree with. Like it looks amazing. Now, if you look in, through this trailer, you'll see a lot of really great evidence of great hair physics throughout. This is the best example. 
You also see like some looks like dithering patterns on the hair. Like it's not, you know, the cleanest, but obviously yep, that's a hard, yep, yep. hard problem to solve. I mean, trust effects is kind of an old tech. I think in more recent games, we have not seen this attempt to really model long flowing hair in this really uh, great mm-hmm. way. So this yeah, we, is really cool to see. We've seen a lot of games shift to a strand based mm-hmm. model that's extremely detailed and allows this like fine grained zoom without any visible artifacts really. But mm-hmm. uh, there hasn't been much of a focus on actually simulating the motion of hair, which is yeah, kind of a different problem to solve, I suppose. It uh, is. It's really only been the FIFA games, but they have a like a limit to hair length, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. The re- you know, the reason for a game like this, and it was in when they were doing Star Citizen presentations years ago, they mentioned that one of the things about you can get like one character in a scene with like strand based hair, and then you like, what about the other characters, right? Like. One, yeah, you have to have yeah. the art to do that. And then two, you have to have the performance. So I'd be curious how they're doing it here. Uh, if it is like strand based, it doesn't look at uh, maybe it's no, a I, I, I actually don't think it's it doesn't necessarily <clears throat> look strand based. And I think that's why it's kind of artifact y. Yeah, it's kind of dithery looking. Right. It's, it has a but, dithered uh, out. Like, yeah. Yeah. In, in scenes in this game, you, you can say you can see like there's just tons of characters on screen it's not just like one character they all have it's it like a soliloquy no they all have this hair this is nuts so it's a uh, really well done in spite of that dithered look and uh yeah really really cool to see them push it further because you know red dead redemption 2 that's probably like one of the things that dates it the most is like the, the character rendering oh yeah and the hair yeah. and stuff like that uh, so well, the beard looked okay in the game, but it didn't yeah. move or anything. Uh, one other really cool shot here is at 52 seconds again, that green truck where you see this guy, yeah, 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 with just with this awesome crazy like dreads, and his hair is just going nuts in the wind. And like, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw that in a game, hair actually moving in a violent manner in the wind. And maybe yeah. from a different angle, it would look a little glitchy or not so great. But I think that's just so cool that Rockstar is willing to go out and say, yeah, we're going to have like really crazy Harrison in the wind. <laughs> Show you something yeah. cool. You haven't seen it in a there's while. Usually so like, awesome. There's usually some like restraints to prevent that. Like it can yeah. only go like so far horizontal or self intersections don't occur. So you want to have like it not move too much. It's a lot of good stuff here. That, uh, that, that shot, by the way, again, the green truck that, man, the paint on the truck there right first of all you do have the rt reflection of the the mirror there in the truck door which is cool but like the paint mm-hmm. shader itself look at that that's like that's so good mm-hmm. looking i mean that looks yeah. better than some dedicated driving games as you know <laughs> yeah it really does as uh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh quite impressive i gotta say actually the material work there in general like the way like the the plastic rim to the door uh to the right of the window itself like it looks suitably mm-hmm. plasticky, like what you'd expect in a car. And mm-hmm. I'm just kind of impressed with the quality of the vehicle rendering in this trailer. And obviously you're going to spend a lot of time doing vehicles. In vehicles. And we haven't seen Rockstar do vehicles since GTA five, right? So this is oh and that, my God. again. That's I guess that's kind of the thing to to remember here is that we've not s we don't know what Grand Theft Auto would have looked like on a PS4 or an Xbox One. Like because the the game we did get on there that's a, that's a PS3 360 game, right? Mm-hmm. Like it has yeah. those enhancements, but that's you know this this is actually something built for the new machines, and we've not seen it for so long. So it's really crazy to see what they're doing here. I'd be curious to know when they really, really, truly kicked off development on this game, mm-hmm. because wow, I would also be curious. Yeah, I uh, mean, I also love that shot where they're in the intersection, uh, doing sort of the uh, the donuts in the middle. With the car, and you oh, see all the, the, smoke, the smoke kicking up at night, and it's just kind of like filling the scene. That looks pretty good. There's just, there's, yeah, yeah. There's so yeah. many things, but then of course there's the characters, right, Alex? That are like, the characters look, they look really good, but it's obviously very clearly going for like stylized realism rather than actual like photorealism. Yeah, I 100. percent It's it's a little bit in the proportions of some aspects of the face, uh, a little bit. Like everyone looks a little bit. A little bit. I don't know how to describe it. Someone, someone put a comment on this web zone about what that is. I don't know what type of realism that is. I think the eyes in particular are a little bit more prominent in the face. And then you have like this super smooth skin on all the characters, like blemish, relatively mm-hmm. blemish free skin. And I kind of contrast this because I think this is really good looking rendering, right? Just because it's stylized doesn't mean it doesn't look great. But if you look at something like, you know, 
The Matrix Awakens, that's going for a yeah, very photo real look, right? Still, still great looking rendering, fantastic looking rendering, very photo real. This looks so, great. Alan Wake very 2, stylized. Alan, it, mm -hmm. Yeah, Alan Wake 2 as well. Looking at it again, like at, at the prison section, right at the beginning of the video, um, the rendering kind of reminds me of Spider Man you know, Insomniac's games where they have these very detailed characters, but they're very clearly not designed to look like real, right? That's yeah. kind of what this reminds me of. And by the way, that, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, corrections officer or whoever it is at the beginning there when parole she turns... officer. Parole officer, yeah. when she turns around and then goes into the office there and she's sitting at the desk, her hair, that's incredible. Like the way mm -hmm. they've got all the little curls in there and everything bobbing around so realistically, like that kind of hair done at that level, that's that's awesome. That that genuinely looks amazing. All the hair in this game looks looks absolutely killer. That's <laughs> yeah. that's a, such a huge focus. Killer hair. And yet, despite that, they have these gigantic crowds full of, uh, as the Simpsons would say, gigantic asses as well, uh, <laughs> bouncing around all over the place. That's that's how they roll, I guess, in this world and. That's also, I guess, impressive. Now, we don't see any actual, like, gameplay moving around the city, so I'm curious to see how it scales. But the crowd scenes, that's far, far more dense than we've seen in any prior GTA game. And due to the nature of what Red Dead Redemption 2 was, we never really saw any truly crowded scenes in that game either, right? Mm -hmm. so, in comparison to... I mean, what do, you you what do you think on this, Oliver? I think it's pretty interesting what we're seeing here. Yeah. I mean, I think that, like, when you look at some of these scenes, like, at 22 seconds, you do see, like, huge crowds, like, 50-plus people in a given space, in a given frame of the camera. And that's just so intense. I have to wonder, like, maybe this is a bit of that vaunted current-gen CPU power being put to good use, because I don't know that we've seen really that big increase in scale uh, of simulation. But here it looks like maybe we're seeing that. And that could maybe also suggest that, hey, this might not be a, a 60 FPS experience either because this is really intense stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, if they're, if they're going to have lighting consistency throughout the world, just as an expectations management, like if they want to just art the game one time, people hate it when I use that verb, by the way. I always get comments under videos like, don't use the word art as a verb, Alex. Uh, <laughs> but I will. Um, if they're going to art the game once, uh, then... Uh, they're going to not want to rely on different solutions. And the chance of them, you know, trying to reach 60 FPS with RTGI, we've seen this generation so far mm. that it, it <laughs> is almost a bridge too far for every single game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, almost, like for almost every game. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. rare that it pants well. So uh, here, yeah, definitely 60 FPS. And I think if they want to really do push the op open world environment and a lot of stuff that the trailer just won't show here because it's not gameplay, they're not going to show any sort of the, like, okay, what are the new physics things? What are the new animation things? They've always kind of pushed these things with each GTA version since, I don't know, 4. So... These are all the things they don't show in the trailer, and that's those are other aspects that say, like, okay, we need to use this new CPU, CPU power of this current generation of consoles. So I'd expect 30 FPS based on this trailer. Another yeah, thing I'm yeah, also yeah. kind of expecting on the trailer, too, is that weren't some of the original GTA V trailers, like, a lot of the cinematic aspects from just the intro of the game? Weren't uh, they? They were just, like, a lot of those vignettes uh, from the yeah. game's intro. Like on the beach and whatnot. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Right, I'm curious yeah. if this is all like early game stuff. So there's a lot actually that we're not seeing here. Still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also a little bit curious, like, because we know this game is two years out and all this stuff looks like extremely polished. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And obviously they, they work on the, on the trailer specifically, but I do wonder the extent to which the content here was created for the trailer, um, especially some of the more cinematic moments. And like to what extent, obviously, you know, you can have something that looks great and is running in even in real time, but it might not be representative of the final product in every single way. I, I don't mm -hmm. think that's the case here. I think this is probably pretty representative of the final product, especially given some of the uh, small compromises that we do see. Yep. But um, I do wonder if this is actually like, you know, reflective of actual scenes you see in the game, or if it's actually been sculpted for a preview, a trailer. Yeah, Probably yeah. somewhat sculpted, I would say. But, you know, Rockstar has a pretty good track record for this stuff. Like, I'm actually looking at the GT5 reveal trailer here, GTA 5. Uh, yeah. It looks consistent with how the, the game shipped on PS3 and 360. 
and lots of the same rendering artifacts you would expect from those machines that were in the final game. But then also stuff like the Red Dead Redemption 2, all the media for that ended up being accurate to how the game looks. Uh, so I yeah. feel pretty mm-hmm. confident that they wouldn't put out a trailer at this point that just goes beyond. And all those compromises we've spotted suggest that this is at least a realistic target for what they're trying to achieve. So right. I agree. Mm-hmm. I think we can expect that. Uh, yeah. And man, I'm just looking at this beach scene again, right at the beginning of the trailer, around 20 seconds or so. The way, it, if you actually look all the way down the coast, there's like umbrellas and just detail stretching all the way down there along the beach. That looks, this, yeah. this is a, yeah. that, that beach scene in particular looks really spot on. Yeah, this, this once again, like we haven't seen this engine uh, target this type of content as in a modern day city with all the density and things that that means since GTA 5 and GTA 5 was a game built around the PS360. So there's a lot to be seen still, a lot so, of power to be shown. Based on that then, I think what we can expect is this game's going to come out in 2025 on those consoles, it's going to look great. Then in 2026 or 2027, maybe 2026 it'll show up uh on PC. And then after that, at some point, we'll be getting to the new consoles and then we'll get a new console version of that, which also might receive updates on the PC, maybe. Yeah. And then not. it'll also then <laughs> show up again on the PlayStation 7. 7.5? The 7. That maybe point? the PlayStation 7 Pro will be the final update for GTA 6. <laughs> I mean, the development cycles are getting a bit longer. So but, okay, so just I wanted to. So I think we've covered a lot of this trailer. We did yeah. a really good job there. Um, the I, one joke I wanted to make is that this is currently not announced for PC. I so I did a little, I did a little fuzzy napkin math this morning by just staring at the Steam Hardware Survey, and I found that something like ten point eight five percent of all PCs, according to the November survey, are thirty eighty class GPU or better. That's really powerful hardware. Whoa. There's 132 million active users on Steam. Uh, so you get something like, I don't know, you get something like a little bit more than 10 million 3080s. This is announced for Series X and Series S. There's only been something like 20 million series consoles sold to date or something like that. So there's arguably more RTX 3080s out there than Series Xs. Yet, PC waits. That's <laughs> Just to throw that yeah. Out. I mean, as of September, there's 21 million <laughs> units between Series X and Series S, and if we and you know, there's way more Series S sold than Series X. I think so. it's like a 60 40 split or something like that. Yeah. So, so, so there's definitely there's definitely more RTX 3080 class or better GPUs out there than Series X. Ouch. Yeah, and then if, obviously the Series S is the minimum there. There's there's you know probably a hundred million uh, I PCs think, that are better I think than that. the reason for this is pretty <laughs> simple and it kind of sucks it's just like this is the rockstar know they can do this they're going to do the console version and then the pc version will become its own event thing and a lot of people that bought it on the console will buy it again right mm-hmm. uh and it'll also get interest which will spark more sales again on the other con like they know what they do. They know what they're doing. When you look at the numbers of GT five, like like it or not, like they know how to 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 get that bag, yeah. so to speak. Like they they're very very good at that, and it does suck because it would be really nice to have this on PC on day one. Uh, obviously, it's not going to happen. I'm super curious to see what this means for Series S though, like what right. this will look like on there. Like I, obviously, it has to work, but. Uh, this yep. is good. this yeah. is going to be a serious push for that system, I think, and it'll be fascinating yeah. to see it. Thirty FPS target, fourteen forty p ish res so far on some nebulous probably next gen console. Whatever, gen it's console. probably a PS Five Xbox Series X target. The trailer, right. I would say, yeah, I'd agree. With so that. we could assume maybe seven twenty p target. That sounds really S. realistic to me, based if, on if all they the want to keep. Games we've seen I feel so like far. if they're if they're going this hard on these ray tracing effects, they can't really just like rip them out either. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm going to turn this off." Like you need a yeah. fallback, and you need you need to. I'm sorry, art it the right way with the fallback <laughs> for it to look good. So I think this is one of those cases where they're going to have to make it work. So we'll see what that mm. we'll see what that means. 
I think you would really rather have a game that is like visibly softer and blurrier, but still retains the visual character of the higher end console versions rather than yeah. something that looks like fundamentally different, but is a little sharper. I'd definitely take this. <laughs> yeah. And just the, the amount of extra work they'd have to do to make that fallback version, I think probably yeah. not worth it just for one machine. So, uh, and I, I would like to think that they wouldn't make the choices they've made thus far without considering the series s right they know that's very that's an important machine so uh i think everything we're seeing here is gonna have to work somewhat at least hopefully consistently across them all with dif differences in image quality so right mm -hmm. uh yeah either way gentlemen i think we've talked about this quite enough we've really we've really pushed the limit of what digital foundry is <laughs> all about here with the, with the way we're talking <laughs> on this trailer it's this, this one minute long trailer this, for, this, i don't even know how long it's, it's like 90 long. seconds or something and boy yeah. this is we this is it. generating content we have generated content based on this trailer <laughs> uh, but it you was fun to talk about content. i am actually i'm actually pretty interested and excited about it despite like that's the thing rockstar they helped popularize open world games. And I've, you know, I've expressed disinterest at many open worlds, but Rockstar knows how to make an open world, a level, this place you want to go to that's very interesting and fun to engage with. They are truly one of the masters of this and one of the few to truly nail what it means, like the point of the open world to make this type of experience that just sort of, yeah. the game world pushes back on the player in interesting ways that just makes every interaction enjoyable to some degree. And that's really hard to do. And a lot of mm -hmm. open world games do not do this. So I do have a lot of For confidence sure. that what they're going to do here will be very fun, very beautiful, and... uh can't wait to see more and i'm sure we'll have another one of these videos where we dig into whatever scraps sweet we trailer get. two Tra trailer two i'm a, dude i'm so hyped <laughs> for trailer two i can't wait trailer two gosh coming 2024 trailer two <laughs> maybe trailer three even i don't know oh my goodness yeah either way uh Before two thanks for joining me on this gentleman uh it was a pleasure it was great and um we'll see you next time <laughs>